Transforming a living space into a dream home can be a daunting task, but it doesn't have to be difficult. For years, I've helped homeowners with simple, easy to achieve solutions. All it takes is seeing design challenges as an opportunity for creativity and innovation. Welcome to In The Room. Today, we're gonna to talk about doors. You guys have been sending in all sorts of questions and oftentimes I get questions about doors. And it makes sense. There's a lot of different types of considerations when it comes to doors, whether it's aesthetic, functional, or logistical, doors can be complicated. So here they are, your top five questions. Let's get into it. Question number one, what tips do you have for updating front doors? Your first tip is always gonna be repaint. Why? Because it gives a fresh coat of paint, some new life to your facade, and it gives you an opportunity to bring in some of your own personality as well. Whatever color you pick, it should offer some way of attracting people's attention to the front door. So if it's glossy black, it's really the gloss that's doing it. Now, my second tip has to do with the entry process from the sidewalk to the front door. That typically involves the portico, which is to say the little roof and the little landing pad in front of the front door, and the path from the sidewalk to the portico. Those two things can really use an upgrade. In most homes that I've worked on, the path is usually cracked or broken. There's old flagstones that don't look good anymore. These are details that should be removed and replaced with something a little bit more luxe. For my next tip, this is going to be obvious and you can see it here, plants. Bring life and color up to the front of your house. You can do this in a variety of different ways, but the idea here is to be seasonal and decorative. And finally, Here's my very final tip. Check out this front door. Replace your front door. For improving your curb appeal, why not considering replacing your front door? Oftentimes, front doors that come with houses are the contractor special that they just installed because it worked for their budget. But they're not necessarily the best choice for the house. How do you know the best choice for the house? Well, take two things into consideration. One, what's the architecture of the house telling you? What are the details around the facade that you could bring in in a similar way in the front door? And two, what does your personality tell you your front door should look like? This should be an opportunity for you to express yourself as well as the architecture of your house. Okay, next question. What makes doors different other than the designs? There's lots of different types of doors out there. I know this. I've gone through the process of selecting doors. In fact, recently I've started working with a door company called Masonite, and through this partnership, I've really learned a lot about how doors can impact the lifestyle of the homes that they're supporting. So let's get into it. Doors really have three different considerations that you have to keep in mind when you're picking and choosing between different styles and different types. The first is aesthetics. Obviously, with a curb appeal decision, uh, the aesthetic of a front door can go a long way in upping your curb appeal. But there's interior aesthetics to keep in mind as well. I've found that if you have, for example, a classical style home, you can obviously have classical style and trimmed out doors inside, but the styles don't necessarily have to match. I've actually seen really beautiful instances of modern door styles inside a more traditional home and the inverse of that as well. The second consideration is more functional. Some doors damp and sound better than other doors. You've heard of the two main door types, hollow core and solid core. Hollow cores are hollow, they're lighter, and they damp and sound a little bit less. Solid core doors are heavier and they hold sound in or out. The final consideration with a door, I think, is lighting. Front doors are one place that you might consider a door with glass in it because a lot of people appreciate the additional lighting in their entry foyer. You might consider Masonite's Vista Grand Door, which has 18% more light than other doors I've seen, and that amount of visible glass area is a very luxurious look. There's also interior opportunities for lit doors. For example, you can choose French doors with glass in them or even barn doors with glass in them. And what that does is not only allow more light into those rooms, but it creates a flow within the rooms. Okay, next question. Should different hinges be used for hollow core versus solid core doors because of the weight difference? Uh, actually, no. Hinges do not need to be any different in size or shape, depending on if the door is hollow or solid. Instead, what you have to consider is the height. Any door that's higher than 6'8 is probably going to need four hinges, and any door that's 6'8 or lower is totally fine with three hinges. Next question. My door won't stay open and it swings halfway shut. Is there any way to fix this? Yes, there's multiple ways to fix this. The first thing is actually tighten the hinges. Go to the hinges, take a look. Sometimes the screws can have loosened over time. If you just tighten them, your problem might be solved right then and there. Next up, 
If the hinges, as you're checking them, seem misaligned, that is to say, if the hinge is actually sitting a little bit crooked inside the groove in which it's supposed to sit, then this is an opportunity for you to support the door. You can do that with a door stop or even a couple magazines under the door so you're not carrying that weight. And then unscrew the hinges and then reattach them so that they're well aligned. That alignment is actually crucial. If your house is settling, that alignment can actually have been thrown off by the house settling itself. So it's not even necessarily something that you're aware of, but it happens over time. Another problem with hinges is they've been over greased. As you're checking the hinges, see if there's gunked up grease, excess grease, grease that's hardened. Anytime you have too much grease, this is an opportunity for you to just clean that hinge a little bit and see if that solves your problem as well. It's counterintuitive, but too much grease can be a problem because that over grease door is just swinging a little too easily and we need a bit more friction so that the door stays put. And finally, this is my favorite tip. You're going to want to tap out one of the hinge pins and bend it slightly. You can do this by putting it on a hard surface, let's say one end of it on a brick on a concrete floor, and just tapping it with a heavy mallet or hammer so that it's slightly bent. Then place it back into the hinge, again, only slightly bent, and that extra friction is gonna keep your door from swinging open freely. If this doesn't work, you might wanna do it with a second hinge or even a third. I think between these four tips, you're gonna solve your problem. If not, it might be time to call the professionals. And the final question. Advantage versus disadvantage for a barn door. Can they be used for bathrooms or laundry rooms? Of course they can be used for bathrooms or laundry rooms, but you have to consider that they don't dampen sound as well as some other doors do. So if your laundry room, for example, is in a hallway, I would say it's a great place for a barn door because hallways are tight spaces and you don't want a door swing in a hallway. And that's the biggest advantage to barn doors. They are space saving opportunities and they are also great ways to bring in style. One of the things that I love about barn doors, by the way, is they're easy to install. You basically have to install it level and then hinge your door onto it and you're done. Not only is it easy, it's fast. There's bathrooms that are great for barn doors and there's bathrooms that are maybe not so great. The ones that are great are bathrooms that already have some privacy built in. For example, the bathroom off of a master bedroom. A less great place for a barn door might be the main guest bath, which is off the main house and privacy would be a slightly higher concern. Embrace the barn door. It brings a lot of style to your room and they even come with glass in them if uh, lighting is one of your considerations. And that's it. These are your top five most asked questions about doors. I hope I've answered them for you. Keep watching In the Room with John Gidding where I offer brilliant and chic solutions to your most difficult design and space planning questions. Till next time.